walk the twisted streets of the mad city in a board game that fuses worker placement with deck building. Extract dreams in the city slumbering and use them to buy favors from nightmares. Procure special services in the bizarre bazaar. Score points through skillful play in Mother Gwen's Deadly High School and the Sinister 13th District. Compete for the Wax King's favor and the ultimate prize. Escape, escape, escape. In this game, set in the sinister world of Don't Rest Your Head, role-playing game, your opponents lurk around every corner, waiting to attack. Can you outsmart your friends and win the Nightmares game? Whatever you do, don't turn your back, 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 don't turn your back. Go to evilhat.com or www dot kickstarter dot com forward slash projects forward slash evil hat forward slash don't dash turn dash your dash back Not, I, we oh, are live. Welcome, to, welcome to the show, Hank, and everyone else. Uh, <laughs> and just Hank. <laughs> and Hank. <laughs> and and Hank. <laughs> the I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and break the fourth wall. We've had lots of issues tonight. Wow. Uh, <laughs> couldn't even wait ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't even get into well, the that, show. I, because I, I, it's not I, like, I, I want to. It's not like it's like I, a, it's listen, not a public. I listen. want to start the show talking about how much technology sucks a butt. All right, so we've for the last hour, we've been trying to figure out how to get somebody who does not have a microphone on their computer into a hangout. We've tried all the fucking add-ons. We've tried this. We've tried that. Because tonight we were supposed to have Victor Gishler on as our guest. And that fell through because technology sucks all the butts. So, no, I want to talk about it. Very great, uh, we spent about a good ten minutes listening to a very, a very fantastic holding song. Sitting on a conference call. <laughs> Just over and over and over again. <laughs> Was that sitting on the dock of the bay with the words changed? I don't think so. I don't know who that was. I mean, well, no, because it, it sounded a lot like a... Because it's, it's a female vocalist, but it sounded a lot like sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time, but instead it was it sitting, like kind of sitting on this conference call, wasting time. It, it was a very fucking annoying song either way. The point is, technology sucks all the butts, uh, we're missing out on talking to somebody that I was I was highly looking forward to, which is the second week in a row that shit's got shit's gotten fucked up for us. And it's <laughs> fuck you, Craig. <laughs> wow, he's agreeing. I don't understand why you're being upset. It's fucking oh, we're we're that we're one of those shows now. We're a fucking soundboard show. Well, you're hey. We're live. What do you expect? Well, we're not. No one's gonna be watching this shit. They're gonna catch us. If someone catches us, Hank, well, uh, he'll catch us later. I don't know. We only got one viewer. What you? It's gotta be you. You're watching. You got it on downstairs, don't you? Uh, we're live to hard drive, as as Craig likes to say. So. Yeah, so that was a uh, that was the most interesting hour in my life. Let me tell you. Here, you call me. Now, now I'm going to call you. 
Okay, now we'll call each other. <laughs> well, fuck, oh, my phone's not working. <laughs> As we just kept looking at each other online going, okay, is that your number still? Yeah, we're just doing... <laughs> it was very annoying. So... <laughs> that's the, Craig, Let's you might need to turn your your volume up because every time you go to interrupt me or Dennis with a fucking uh, soundboard, it's bare, it's chopping through. Chopping through. There we go. There we go. Is that better? That's better. yeah. Now that's really that's loud as fuck. A little bit better, yeah. Well, no, it's coming so, now. It's, so we're working uh, steadily. Uh, well, <laughs> we're working steadily as we can, as steadily as we can, in figuring out the various things that are fucking the show up. Uh, <laughs> you might want to just get rid of everybody on the show. That might actually fix the problem. <laughs> 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 well, you know what would fix the problem? What would fix the problem is if we were all three in the same fucking room again. But since that's not going to happen, Craig. <laughs> since that, uh, since that's not going to happen, probably ever. Well, at least not this year, because I don't think I'm coming back. This year, yeah, you're not going to be at the events. No, I don't think so. As as much as I want to go to C2E2, I do have uh, a mission for you guys on C2E2 though, because Eric Powell will not uh, respond to me on Twitter. So Shocking. you guys are going to need to go to Artist Alley and tell Eric Powell that we want him on the show. He's the guy. He's the guy who does the goon. I know. I know. I know who what he does. I, so how 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 pray tell do we propose to get him on the show? Do we go up and ask him, or does or does Craig grab his by his arms and I just give him body blows right into the kidneys? <laughs> I mean, there's two ways to go about this. Seriously, we could be polite about it, but hey, we'd like to come on our show, or Craig grab him and then we just pummel him. And you're gonna come on the show. You go fucking. I'm gonna bounce your head off the fucking. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Whatever it takes, Dennis. Whatever it takes. <laughs> You'll see the paper. <laughs> no, I uh, I do. I've been I've been trying to get his attention to come on the show because I think the goon is coming to an end, and if that's true, I'm I'm a little sad about it. But it has been going for fucking sixteen years now, so uh, I wanted to talk to him about it and see what the future holds, or whether or not you know we're gonna see an offshoot. Or a, a branching off of, of goon characters for future books, or if it's just that universe is done. So when you guys see him at C2E2, I would appreciate if you would extend the offer as politely and and convincingly as possible. So should we hand out cards again? Like that went over like fucking gangbusters last year. <laughs> well, <laughs> since I won't be printing them out, if you guys want to make new cards and hand them out, that would be fucking fantastic. So they don't because I like highly them. doubt that you guys would make them look like fucking construction <laughs> business cards. It did look like a roofing company. I'm not going <laughs> to... <laughs> the ranting idiots. <laughs> Housing. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, you need to add more than just soundboard sounds. No, he's enjoying himself. Let him be. He's happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> <That's about. laughs> oh, baby, a triple! Oh, yeah! What the hell? What the, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that was. Anyway. Craig is now going to... Uh, what's that transformer? Is it radio? Shockwave? Shockwave, yeah, where where the the only way you communicate is through sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on video. You could go through interpretive dance too. Just, <laughs> Craig just jumps up. I'm a tree. I'm a tree. <laughs> that I would like to see. <laughs> I think that'd be the best way to answer people's questions anymore is through interpretive dance. Just people, maybe would just leave me alone then. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. 
Fussy, fussy. <laughs> and Twyla. Twyla, keep it all inside. So. Do ladies work here? <laughs> <laughs> You've lost your lower third again, Craig. What? <laughs> I didn't hear anything you said. You lost your lower third again. No, who cares? <laughs> I'm, I think he's given up on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, <laughs> this is all supposed to work just... When we're by ourselves, it seems to work great. <laughs> Every time we try to go... I have a new eyes. She nice. Oh, God. Anyways. <laughs> I win. Am I gonna, whatever. I'll just sit here. <laughs> This is a song called uh, uh, Namogusrovich uh, Domovon. It's been in my country, there is a problem. All right. <laughs> are, are we finished? Freddy Mercury. Are we finished now? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh,. Yeah, but with tonight's fucking perturbance, bro. No, the fiat. Like it, it, like it, yeah, it, it threw everything because I, I have nothing prepared uh, to talk about. Uh, there are a few things that I've seen, and 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 we'll, we'll I'll throw those out there. But like, it, it's gonna be uh, another normal show for us, I guess. But it, like I said, we had a, we had grand schemes, and they all got shot to hell. Which is pretty much par for course. I mean, it's just par for it's what we do. It's how we it's how we go through life around here. Yeah, but <laughs> the fuck was that? Is that Dr. that was Who? Chewbacca? That was Chewbacca. <laughs> That's Chewbacca because the way. <laughs> okay, now it's Chewbacca. The way things usually work for us is we come up with a scheme to do things better or do something different. We implement that scheme. We fuck it up for like two months, and then out of the blue, it just like works, and we don't even notice that it's working. And then we come up with the new scheme a couple months after that, and and we fuck that up. Enough with the soundboards, Craig. Enough, because <laughs> I can only hear like. like <laughs> No fucking clue what that noise was. I, it was an audience clapping and cheering. I, I apologize. Craig, Craig is some. Okay, I'm done. One more. Uh. I joined Facebook. I saw that. And, Cocker. Yeah. I think I added you. And I thought about not adding you just to say just not to do it because I think it'd be really funny. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> uh, you're killing me, Craig. <laughs> you're killing me. Uh, and there have been there have been some things. There's some people that I live next to in Indiana that are anti-vaxxers. So we've had some conversations about that this last week. Uh, I really like I I really kind of want to get a scientist now. I want to get a doc scientist, not just a normal like everyday doctor. I want to get like a sci a research scientist, microbiologist, something along that line. Yeah, to, to come on and, or yeah, immunologists would be fucking amazing to come on and talk about these things because, yes, there is the point of uh, Big Pharma is, Big Pharma is in control of immunizations and it is just basically a mass corporation that does not give two fucks about human life. They don't care about your life. They don't care about my life. They don't care about our children's lives. 
And there is some credibility to the idea that uh, immunizations and vaccines might have uh, specific toxins to make people have a low-grade sickness because healthy people don't make the medical industry money. Sick people do. So if you make people sick from the beginning, they're always going to be dependent on your medical intervention. I, there is some credibility to that idea but at the same time we basically wiped out polio measles the whooping cough I forget the measles. scientific name well I said measles oh did you? I, I didn't hear it I, heard, I cut out then chicken pox like we've we've basically wiped out several diseases through generations of vaccination. And now suddenly these diseases are making a comeback because people are getting on their high horses and saying, I'm not going to fucking give my kid shots. To which I can only respond with, I'm going to give my kid the shots that he needs to, to you know, stay safe and, and keep measles and other life-threatening diseases from taking his from possibly taking his life because it's it's worth that to me I don't see the correlation equals causation of autism that it that like the relatively popular argument or counter argument is well you know the the rise of autism follows very closely if not exactly the rise of uh, organic food sales I knew so it I knew it does organic <laughs> food give you autism no, like, it's, envi it's environmentalism yeah I mean you know what is it no it's act no I, I, that's it. I just read a, I just read an interesting article the fact that uh, the if you really want to help your kids with autism, you need to study more about environmentalism. They're starting to realize that it's the environment that might be causing a lot of these autism. It doesn't help that they've they've uh, rebrand branded what autism is, so more people have autism now than they used to because they've they've set more factors up for styles of autism. And not all autism is a kid with helmets in a the corner. There are actually kids who have autism who function just fine. It's still they have autism. They've changed the the wording of it. So now there's more people involved in, who are more autistic now than they were before. So now we have this massive influx of autism, all, and a lot of it was just a word change, you know, or a, uh, a diagnosis change. Like the same idea behind uh, ADHD and ADD. That was, you know, once they start figuring out factors of it, they start they opened it up so more people have it now. Same idea. And uh, but the article on autism was is that the fact that uh, it's a genetic it's a genetic defect, but it's also caused through environmental factors. So if you really want to worry about autism, forget worrying about vaccines and start worrying about the environments you're living in. I also blame the parent. Yeah, that too. Because the parents always bitch and moan, but I want to go to them and go, well, what'd you do before you uh, had your kids? I just want to know. Were you out drinking and partying, getting high, doing shit, doing stupid stuff? You know what I mean? Were you a heavy smoker, heavy drinker? Before they're having kids. No one ever. They never talk about that. They're black kids. Well, what did you do before you had kids? <laughs> just curious. Just saying. Good point. You know, I mean, look at. Let's just take Jenny McCarthy, okay? <laughs> the 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 uh, vaccines cause autism. Let's see what Jenny McCarthy did back in the nineties, in the early two thousands. Or, or as I like to call her, the uh, Hollywood slut bomb. Right. I mean, we're. I don't think she was an angel before she. You know, we seem to forget the fact that Jenny McCarthy was. In, well, not the fact. So she was employable is not the thing. She used to go out and party and do things. You know, we're not. So I don't think she was much of an angel. So <laughs> the fact that yeah, she, it's like what what drugs did you pump into your body yeah. before you had a kid, and and what drugs did you pump into your body? right before you had a kid what drugs do you continue to pump into your body what do you smoke do you drink uh, what what chemicals are in your fucking uh, house at the moment where do you live do you live near uh, a highly industrial area Craig, she I'm just gonna mute you I don't play. 
I'm just gonna fucking mute you. <laughs> uh, so I, I, yeah, I I would agree. There's a lot of I here in northern New Jersey. You have to test your house for radon because there and it probably should be tested everywhere, anywhere that there's been mining. Uh, you guys should probably. Well, you guys don't. Dennis, you have a basement. Craig doesn't have a basement. Uh, yeah, Craig's not. Uh, Craig's not up in our, in our, <laughs> echelon of home ownership. <laughs> you and your, you and your two stories. <laughs> I want to mute you, but I know as soon as I mute you, you're going to start fucking talking. <laughs> you can't mute me. I can mute you, though. Yeah, I, I can say, mute you. I can, no, you can. Say, so now just mute. <laughs> See? And I can unmute me, but I still can't hear you. Oh, you turn off my camera now? You fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all video now. That works out perfect. And and now now you've completely full motion video. <laughs> Hi Hank, I can see you. <laughs> I'm in full motion video too, because I can undo. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Said I quit. <laughs> Fucking twenty minutes in the show and I already and I'm ready to quit. God damn it, Craig. I'm pretty good at shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally didn't even record that for the audacity. What's that? Any of it. <laughs> well, I'll be what? playing that later. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you can pull it off the, the, the video. Yeah, yeah. God, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys get for fucking around the whole time? What? What do you fucking what do you fucking around all? <laughs> Dude, we all know I'm not feel bad. Listen, I'm lucky we didn't go this far into this fucking thing. All right, I'm not that good with technology. I'm gonna fly out there just to take your fucking soundboard away. <laughs> oh, he's got it on the computer. You can just set it up. It's not like you can. You just have to take the whole goddamn thing from him. Uh, so like for me to lock the door <laughs> and shoot him. There's castle laws. I mean, he can get away with it. Hey, you're not the only person who fucking buys off the scam, the scam store, the scam stuff store. Yeah, what'd you buy? <laughs> and some bump keys. Oh, I got a I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a whole, I got a whole set in the room. It uh it unlocks deadbolts too. Have you got it to unless work? You have, unless you have the triple tumbler. Oh, I got a quadruple tumbler. <laughs> I also have a garage door between the locks. So there. And an attack cat. <laughs> no, because you've got a front door. I got a cat that'll attack you. <laughs> She's totally gonna. She's got bat claws. I've met your cats. Your cats are oh, that's sweet. Cool. Sir. <laughs> no? Yeah. You guys got another one? Yeah, we got a third one, though. Oh, was that the kitten you got? Yeah, yeah. I totally didn't have this uh, the whole time. Did you guys see that Jenko jeans are making a comeback? Why? That's awesome. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just saw a thing about it. Just like I guess evidently they're making a. Uh, I have no clue. I'm trying to find out why Jenko jeans are making a comeback. Uh, because they were the best. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever think? Probably brought to you brought to you by Jinko Jeans and seizures. 
worn by douchebags all over. You just be ready for when I get a pair. So I had a pair of Jinko shorts when I was like 13. God, I think back. I had baggy pants too, but I'm trying to remember when that was. That was 20 years ago. That, yeah. that was 2012. No, no, I got one pair of jeans anymore. I have one pair of pants. I have like four pairs of slacks and one pair of jeans. It's it's, it's weird. Dennis has moved up in the world, Craig. You have to remember, he threw he away all of his. Huh? He's all cool. He wears slacks now. I don't. I... <laughs> it's part of my job. I have to wear slacks. Oh. I thought you wore scrubs. No, no, not if, no. I, I wear a, a polo shirt and dress slacks most of the time. You can just get a speed suit. I'm just going to get myself a nice track suit velour so I can look like a panda. Speed. Sean John. Nice Sean John suit. Sean John. What the fuck is a speed suit? Everyone watch Adventure Brothers? <laughs> it's been it's a like while. <laughs> so that's what uh, Mr. Venture always wore. Dr. Venture always wore. That was a speed suit. Oh. Like a track suit from the 70s, pretty much. <laughs> oh, it's not a track suit. And pull, oh, it's not a track suit. It's a one piece. Here. It's a one piece, yeah, suit. One solid zip up thing. Yeah. The. What's, what's it called? The jumpsuit. Yeah. Oh, wait. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Is a I can't even. I can't even believe you found it. That goddamn. Is it? Is that making it? Google it. I did men's speed suit. <laughs> Bam! Right there. There it is. Yep. How much are they? Wow, they're under. They're thirty bucks a piece. Yeah. Why? Why would you wear that? I don't understand. I mean, I get it if you're like maybe worked on cars or something. But <laughs> you wear that. Think about that. Think about that thing you just said. What working on cars? No. Why wouldn't you wear that? <laughs> what? Why would you wear that? No, why wouldn't you? <laughs> People, listen. God damn, look at that speed suit right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just screams sexy. I mean... <laughs> it screams speed suit. <laughs> Elastic <laughs> waist that helps you move quickly in short sleeves, keep you cool while you bring the heat. Oh, yeah. I'd wear that. <laughs> I just don't see what you would have a speed suit for. It's got to be for industrial work. It's got to be. <laughs> for people who are too. For people who are too lazy to get dressed normally. Well, they're the ones that always wear fucking. Uh, those pajamas to fucking the grocery store that I can't fucking stand. Put on pants, for God's sakes. I mean, seriously. How hard is that? When I go to the store and someone's not wearing... I like just walking around and like just sweatpants or a fucking pair of fucking pajama pants, I just want to burn them in, pa in those pants. I just unless, <laughs> unless, they're, unless they're a pregnant lady, then they have an excuse of wearing sweatpants. Well, okay. That, I'll give you that caveat. Okay, that's fine. But otherwise, forget it. There's no reason any a grown adult <laughs> needs to be wearing any of that. <clears throat> Admittedly, but see, I mean, I, but see I think that's that's where you go wrong. Why? Is you say there's no reason that a grown adult should dress that way. No. Well, there's not many grown adults anymore. Good point. Good point. They're Good just. Point. Large I'm, children. Great, I'm not the only one that noticed that. I see it a lot at my job. A lot nowadays. A lot of people I work with. Well, it's you like, also... It, I huh? mean, isn't the like, average age of people that are going into that business around like 20? No, I actually, the average age, is, uh, this is usually a second career. I like the green one. I'm not going to lie. They also got red. 
<laughs> red and yellow. The green and the red. I'd go with that. I think that'd be you. Oh, check it out. You can get the green with the built-in belt. Nice. Nice. It's one of those old... And look at the... Fastened belt. Boot <laughs> cut on those. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's those shoes, dude. <laughs> those shoes are classic. Oh my god! Did people actually wear that shit? It might. Dude, I don't know. We'd have to go back to the seventies and figure that out. I mean, I've seen some of those from the seventies. I, I am shocked on some of the shit they wore back in the seventies. But literally, got they got away with. It's fucking... You just wait, man. I do some shopping with my nineteen seventy three Sears catalog. <laughs> <laughs> I am very impressed that the 70s never came back around. Everything else has. <laughs> Everything in the 70s sucked. That's why they never came around. I mean, disco. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. First it, and it, foremost, <laughs> disco. Like that's saying. that's the 70s. Right, jumpsuits and like leisure suits. I haven't seen any of that come make a comeback, which I I should be thankful for. We went from the 60s to the 80s. At least there's something to be said. And now Jenko jeans. Which were with the 90s, right? <laughs> <sighs> Fucking Jenko jeans, man. Well, at least on the upside, you'll know who's a... When you see Jenko jeans, you'll know uh, which one's a Juggalos. I mean, that'll be automatic. No, because all fucking douche... Like, we already have the billboard for douchebag. Like, there are already clothing companies that declare, I'm a giant douchebag. <laughs> It's called Infliction and Tap Out. Jesus, fuck. Why would... See, no, that... Why would anybody wear that? That's like having two dresses on your legs. I don't know. I, I didn't realize that's what they looked like. I really didn't. That's actually what Jenko jeans were? Yeah. yeah. That That's really? the that's the vast majority of the design. Really? I it mean, fits around I, the waist, I, I, and I it's like baggy, a dress. I baggy, yeah, I was going to say, I wore baggy pants. Because I was skating a bit then, so I mean, I had so I had room, but it wasn't like that. I didn't, I didn't realize they were pretty much like traditional old school Japanese fucking, you know. <laughs> you wore you wore baggy pants to skateboard. Yeah. Fucking, I stopped wearing baggy pants when I got into skateboarding. Well, I always wore short baggy shorts. I should say, little baggy shorts. Oh, yeah, baggy baggier shorts are good. Yeah. I just I couldn't skate in tighter pants. It just, it just I felt like I was like getting caught. God damn, really. <sighs> Yeah, yeah now, now match <laughs> match those pants with an Affliction t-shirt, and there you go. That's the fucking future generation. <laughs> I a t-shirt. Or what? <laughs> I didn't hear you, Craig. That may be a tap-out t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, Affliction, tap-out, they're all the fucking same thing. Did you guys happen to see that there's a... Was it Organic Farms? The... Uh, Company they like they they make uh they're big for I know them for milk like organic milk they have a commercial called Save the Bro <laughs> it's it, it pretty much shows all that stuff it's hilarious because it talks about you know them drinking all these chemicals and stuff and we got to save the bro man got to save the bro we don't want to be coming extinct because of all the chemicals they're pumping in their body <laughs> and they really do a good job of making fun of those guys. No organic farms. We do want them to become extinct. <laughs> I had like I had that uh, discussion today on Twitter. There's apparently like a big movement. <laughs> <laughs> we do. You do realize that even though we're doing a video podcast as well now, our audio listeners are going to be left out if we don't describe what we did. Audio listeners are going to have to man up and go watch it on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> we change the format. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Balls in your court, listener. <laughs> listener. Uh, Literally, listener. Just the one. <laughs> Balls in your court. <laughs> anyway, uh, I had I had a, a conversation. I well, I joined in on a on an ongoing conversation that I've been seeing over Twitter uh, lately. Apparently there is a large movement. I don't know how large, but it's large enough to get the attention of, of authors and, and everybody else that I follow on Twitter. Uh, of people that are that are saying that they we need to save science fiction 
because you know SJWs and the queers and women are destroying science fiction. <laughs> and it was it, I responded to a female author today because uh, apparently she'd reached a breaking point, so she just laid it on the line. Uh, so I I responded to her tweet, which was you know basically so you think SJWs. I'm I'm paraphrasing because I'm not looking at Twitter at the moment. So you think SJWs are ruining science fiction? Well, how about you just grow the fuck up, or how about you grow up and shut the fuck up? Uh, science fiction isn't just for old white men. Which, I mean, language aside, I'm I'm pretty. I'm I'm in agreement. You know, just shut the fuck up. So like I I responded with I don't. I still don't understand the SJW thing. It's like anybody who has a, a separate opinion than you is branded an SJW, which in and of itself is not a fucking insult. <laughs> like, SJ buzzword bingo. <laughs> uh, like, being being called an SJW should not be an insult. I had this conversation with uh, Mike Cole uh, when we were, when I was talking to him about coming on the show, and like I guess we're in a different camp. Like an SJW to us, the three of us are those who sit on a computer and tell you that everything you do is wrong, and just because. Oh well, you're wrong because you're white, or you're wrong because you're male, or you're wrong because you're straight, or you're you're eating that fucking that apple wrong. You're pronouncing apple wrong. Those are SJWs. Those fucking sacks of shit that, that hide behind the anonymity of the fucking computer. Those are SJWs. People who fucking stand up and say, "Hey, I I don't see anything wrong with fucking uh, equal rights," e you know marriage laws for, for gays. I don't see anything wrong with uh, equal and and uh, equal opportunity, equal pay for women if they're qualified. I don't see anything wrong with, with, with a fairly egalitarian society. That's not an SJW. That's a fucking normal, everyday fucking person. That should be what we call a fucking American. Like, that's what they should be named. Not SJW. They should just be, hey... You're right. a fucking American, because that's what that's that's what the American idea should be. And if you don't agree with that, well, then maybe you're a fucking pinko commie, and uh, you can get there the fuck out anyway. Yeah. Now you're being an elitist. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind being an elitist. No, my my my, my, listen, big, my biggest thing is is that all of these people who have a lot of complaints have nothing else to worry about in their life. They're not struggling for food. They're not struggling for homes. They're they not have first world problems. Yeah. It's, you know, when, when well, you're afraid Dunkin that the Donuts doesn't give you free Wi-Fi. Might, you, know, when you, you know, when your day is around the corner, like, I might not make it tomorrow. I might die here. You have other things to worry about. Ha, <laughs> 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 But I mean, I have yeah. I'm I'm with you on the fact that everyone everyone has the right to be miserable. Let's leave it at that. How's that sound? You don't. Not everyone has. No one ever has the right to be completely happy because there's no such thing. Everyone has the right to be miserable to their own level of acceptance. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care how great your life you think it is. You're always going to have problems. And if you yeah. feel so strongly about it, go out and do something about it. That's all I say. Yeah. I mean. If you think that this is a big thing, go out and vote against it or for it or or stand on like like you know stand on a picket line, do something, do you know? But just sit behind a computer and bitch about it, or get online and tell someone what you. I mean, it's a it, this is a great medium to get things out, but that doesn't mean that it's it changes anything because not, if that was true, every time we had a vote to be cast. Things would have changed in this country. Everyone who watches this shit online, everyone who watches shit on television, who listens to it on the radio, they get all incensed about it. They'll say something about it, but when it comes time to act, they don't. So they exactly. just want their voice to be—they want their voice to be heard, but they refuse to actually do it and go out and do something about it. Well, they don't—they don't even want their voice to be heard. They just want the fucking—they just want to bash somebody. It's not even about being heard. They just want to fucking go and attack somebody. And there are people out there who are susceptible to trolls. And I don't, I don't, 
I don't have any kind of uh, advice for them to not be susceptible to trolls. Uh, but but the the fact of the matter is, like getting back to the original point, like okay, so a lot of women are writing sci-fi now. Uh, okay. I don't have the books with me at the moment. <laughs> the Halo series. Uh, well, well, yeah. Okay, so let's it, let's, let's look at, let's look at this logically real quick. Sci-fi. One of the first sci-fi books ever written was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. No, that's oh. horror. Uh, it's still, still, it's still, science, still social. It's still one of the cre- one of the precursors to science fiction writing. You got to think about like the, the idea behind the story, not just horror, but story the story itself. You know what I mean? Science, creating you know the science itself. You know what I mean? Well, it, there's science fiction inside. Yes. Uh, what? Inside the inside the novel itself, but it's more uh, horror. It, it's it's considered a horror in the horror genre, not in uh, science fiction. But let's say I don't know what the fuck Wikipedia sucks. Halo novels. Halo graphic novels. Uh, Karen Travis has written several several of the Halo series novels. She's a fantastic fucking author. Uh, Liesl Schwartz, somebody we've talked to on the show, fantastic author. Uh, I'm trying. I'm. I, I unfortunately have mostly male authors, but I have been picking up more and more female authors. But but let's let's not get it let's not get it fucked up here. The fact of the matter is, uh, coming. I'm a I'm a relatively conservative person. That's putting, I that's putting, it, that's putting it nicely. Sure, relatively conservative. <laughs> I'm I'm relatively conservative. I I I I have beliefs that probably went out of style fucking 80 years ago, but I don't push them on anybody. They're just a way I look at the world and I don't see anything wrong aside from the very obvious things. I don't see anything wrong with the way things are headed. Like I I agree with most of the people that are in these various causes uh with the exception of the fact that they're missing the point, their cause is very narrow when the answer is a little bit wider. The big picture is, but we live in an outmoded system. But back to the point, I read female authors. Some of my favorite authors now are women. One of my favorite authors of all times is Clive Barker, who is gay. Uh, and a woman. No, it's not a woman. He's just gay. I was just going with your uh, point. Be helpful. But the fact that people are worried about science fiction, and there's another like subgroup of that that main group that say that we they need to take conventions back because they're being stolen away by these SJWs and these people who just come to cosplay and they're not into the fucking nerd culture and nah, fucking I want to be angry. Then fuck off. Travis, you said that <laughs> two weeks ago. I was going to say, I could have sworn we had that argument about people coming in that really aren't... I don't. I, I don't. I don't think that if you're not really into it, that you should be there. But I don't have control over that. I don't say we need to take conventions back because those people are making people, other people money. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, I, I just... <laughs> what the fuck is that, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> is that what that noise is coming from? You're oh, fucking... yeah, yeah. <laughs> those buttons. I didn't realize it went up to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, I I don't I don't think we need to take conventions back from these people because those people are what make conventions money. All right, and and my, I don't like them, and I and it's my personal opinion. Uh, you know how I, I know how I deal with that. 
I don't associate with them. I don't participate with them. I don't interact with them. Easiest way to get away that I don't like it, I walk away from it. That's how everything should have been. I you don't like something, well, unless it's affecting you in some way, shape, or form, it's not always your business to be involved in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Does that make sense? <laughs> you know, exactly. Is it like I don't like I'm offended. I, you're offended. How does that sound? That's what it sounds like. Yeah, and what it I don't like people who are into it because it's a fad. And I don't particularly think that they should be there just because it's cool to be a nerd right now. <laughs> but at the same time, what is it fucking Minecraft superheroes? I actually it's kinda cool. I'm not gonna lie, that's kinda neat. Two <laughs> D <2D> cosplay? <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I don't necessarily want them to be involved in it. But like you said, Dennis, we go when we go like when we go to C two E two, we go, we go see what we're gonna go see, we go buy what we're gonna go buy, we hang out, we chit chat, we get something to eat, we have a couple beers, we go the fuck home. Like we don't get involved in this fucking this this My nonsense of like Oh, well, I need to be seen with these people, or I need to go tell these people they don't fucking belong. No, I don't. I, there's no point to that. Let them be there if they're going to be there. They're the con is making money off of those people. Right. So if you want your con to stay successful, fucking, you kind of have to accept them. That's disturbing. And I'm, I mean, there's always going to be weird things. This is just the way it is. But you know what? That's the way it is. In, in that type of environment, you're going to catch things you're going to go, why? Or you thought that was a good idea. But you know what you're going to do? You're just going to ignore it. And you're just going to go, that's weird. Well, it's like watching those uh, big bodybuilder guys at the, like C2E2. I went, well, that's just weird. And then I just walked away. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the bodybuilders that had on Hulk t-shirts? Well, no, no. The, the guys who had like on the uh, World's Gym, with their, you know, they're cut all the way down the side. If it, okay, sure, whatever. I mean, so you know that's kind of funny. <laughs> I don't That'll know work. If that's funny or sad. It's The Simpsons. Like, it's it's kind of sad though too at the same time. <laughs> uh, and then there's the triple boob. <laughs> but I mean, even I mean, cosplay is hard to do. It's not like it's easy to do. We all know that. I don't even know what the fuck's going on there. <laughs> Is he wearing fucking flip flops on his face? Yes. I think I hear Craig just dying in the background. Does he have? I, I, does he have like a? In his hands? Is that? Is that? It's, it's a knife, a fork, and a spoon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, to me, that makes that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's your answer right there. Most people have no See, and then right there is just the answer to everything else, right? We put, they put them on there and then of course she goes, "What's wrong with a black Superman?" I say I have no problem with black Superman. I didn't list it under bad cosplay. I just Googled it. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, go <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what is wrong with people? I don't know. They can do whatever the hell they want. As long as it doesn't affect me. Is that what's this face? <laughs> Is Jafet, that uh, Manfe? That's yes, Manfe. There's Manfe. <laughs> See? <laughs> and what happened? We know who Manfe is now. <laughs> and he has no problem with it, and he's happy for it. It's like the guy that, that came as Dr. Roxo at C2E2 last year. Yeah. That was, I, that was great. I'm sorry. Dr. Roxo kicked ass. <laughs> I like Dr. Oxo. 
<laughs> but the point be the point is like I don't I don't understand the SJW attack. And I don't understand the mindset that certain groups of people are ruining a subculture. Because and I can trace that all the way back to being a fucking punk rocker in in my teens. Oh, you like no effects. You're not you're not a fucking punk rocker. Oh, you like Blink one eighty two, you're not in punk rock. I will say yeah, something about of... that. Anyone who says Avril Levine's punk rock, they need to die. That's just so Well <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, mean they're, 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 I had a girl I had a girl tell me once that she was into punk rock in the first band that she listened to. I was like, Really? What are you into? Because I'm into punk rock. What are you into? First band she listed was Papa Roach. I was like, yeah, this conversation's over. <laughs> uh, because <laughs> God, Man Faye's been around that long. Fuck yeah. <laughs> was that Jerry Springer? Oh, that's unscrewed with Martin Sargent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a great show. Martin Sargent was a fucking genius. <laughs> And now he, <laughs> he puts a coat down. <laughs> but, uh, like, I could trace that argument all the way back. And yes, there I've been involved in that argument on the other side where, oh, you don't fucking belong here. Fuck you. You're not into this. But then after I take a minute and I take a step back, it's like, yeah, okay. Whatever you you think, what you're doing is this particular thing. Have at it, because you don't affect my life at all. Your musical taste, or your comic book taste, or your fucking novel taste, or your movie taste, your fucking fashion sense—none of that shit. I don't give a fuck what you like. I don't care what you order at Starbucks. None of that affects my life. So fuck off with your opinion, and I won't give you mine. I, I honestly think that's just because we've gotten older. Being younger, I, I think a lot of it is because when we were being, when we were younger, it was we were we were so adamant about what we were and how it defined us. Now yeah, as we got older, it's like it's like, you know what? There's so many more important things I got to fucking deal with. Whatever little petty problem you have is not my issue right now. My issue is is I got to make sure my bills are paid so I can keep the power on in my house. My kids are fed and I can keep my fucking cars up and running and they don't fucking repo them. This little bullshit about what people think, say, or do does not concern me in the least while I'm trying to make sure my family has a living. So. And see, that was one of the things that shocked me when I, when I started Facebook as I looked up some of the people that I used to know even even back before I moved to to the Chicago area, is a lot of them haven't changed. I moved eight years ago. I was 20... Fucking help me out here. <laughs> I, uh, I was like 25, 26, somewhere in there. When I moved, and... Hello, <laughs> this is... <laughs> I just love their faces because they're, <laughs> they're like, yeah, okay, and <laughs> go and rape no more. I need to use that as a Twitter thing. <laughs> uh, but no, you're right. You know, and what. Like I look back at the people that I used to hang out with and the people I used to know, and a lot of them haven't changed. And their image and their ideologies still defines them. And I find that troubling because in the last decade... <laughs> in the last decade, I found my ideology has changed dramatically to the point where I look back at me 10 years ago and I'm like what who the fuck is that person and you know 
what medication did I need at that point to to change that. And then I look at the teenage me who was defined by an image, and that's completely changed. Where you know, I'd rather just fucking wear a black shirt and fucking black jeans. No logos, no nothing. Like, all my shirts have fucking nerdy shit on them, but... Whatever. If, if those were all taken away and I'm replaced with a plain black or white shirt, like, I don't... I wouldn't care. Like, it wouldn't bother right. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... that's yeah. <laughs> uh, but the... You know... I, I, I guess I, my, I just don't understand why people get trapped, and I get and that's another topic I guess we can file away for the psychologist game developer. Uh, I don't understand how people get trapped in an image or in an ideology, because you should always you know, be evolving. You should always be changing and trying to become better. Not, you know, I think one of the best things I ever heard. For, I heard it put was uh, it was actually a rooster teeth. It was a red versus blue uh, PSA about tattoos. And then he goes, "You are a dumbass." <laughs> That's exactly what he said. You know, if you look back at yourself ten years ago, what do you think? You're a dumbass. Well, ten years from now, you should look back and say you're a dumbass. Every you should always be expounding and changing your thoughts. You should always be challenging how you think and feel and how you look at things. It's it's just a simple. It's a Socratic method. It's really, I should be able to go, why am I doing like this? Why am I being this way? What is going on? If you don't advance, you just, like you said, you stagnate. And then you're just there. And then you, you're still in the same thing that, you know, you're defined by your, your football team uh, from high school. Or you're defined, well, hell, by the football team you watch on television. Where you get the, we needed to do this, and this is how we win, and, this, and that shit. Or you're defined by your car, or the clothes you wear, or the house you live in, or where you're at, or your job, or instead of defining yourself as yourself and trying to advance your own life. Or the ideology that you spew on Tumblr and Facebook and Twitter. That too. And the problem with a lot of those, I think my biggest problem with a lot of the SJWs and everything else along that line, is they refuse to listen to anyone else. They're right, and anything you have to say is completely, utterly wrong. It's not the fact that they argue with it, it's the fact that they just say, no, you're wrong, I'm right, you go fucking jump off a cliff, blah, 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 instead of actually sitting, instead of calling each other's names, having a discussion, understanding why they're arguing the points they have. Don't ask them why they're arguing the points, and just, you know, well, why do you think that way? Why are you doing it like this? What's the reasoning you think this way? Asking them. <laughs> you know, finding out what is the reason this is. And maybe you might actually come away with something different. Instead of and, going, you know, you fucking die, you piece of shit. That's not right. You know, and that's, instead of, you know, you just refuse to hear anybody else. Yeah, and, and like the the people, like there's a, there's, there's the, the phrase trigger warning or, or trigger words. Oh, did you hear, here, here's a great one. Here's a great one since you're talking about this. Did you see the man who was uh, I gotta find let me find the article. Go ahead and finish it. I this this just came up and this is perfectly fitting in with what we gotta say. Go ahead and finish. Uh, but like I could say for me, uh, I have a specific trigger phrase. And that's the privilege. When somebody says privilege, oh you have white privilege. Or you have male privilege, or you have fucking whatever crazy name they come up with to call straight people, or whatever sexual orientation that you are privilege. You don't fucking know me. Like you, how can you, how can you fucking say, oh, well, you have fucking straight white male privilege? Fuck. Like I don't, I don't benefit from the fucking system. I didn't. I don't get a job because I'm fucking white. I got my every job I got is because I fucking I was either physically capable of doing it or I have experience doing it. I didn't. I, I've never, never once benefited. Every. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's actually a really good quote. 
like I I've never once benefited from the system. Almost every single interaction that I've ever had with a police officer, yes, maybe I didn't get shot because I'm white. I can I'll give you that. But almost every every interaction that I've had with a police officer, whether I was the offender or the offended, I was treated like shit. So where am I benefiting from that? I'm not benefiting from a system that pays me more because I'm a male. I'm benefiting from uh, having experience in manufacturing, and I get paid more based on my experience. I started at the fucking bottom. As the fucking rap song says, I started at the bottom, now I'm here. And I'm still at the fucking bottom. So where's my fucking privilege? You want to talk about, you know, you know we, we've heard, we've, uh, we've all heard the fucking, well, you don't have to worry about getting raped. Well, neither uh, do you. How many times have you been raped? That's exactly what I want to talk about right here. Right here, okay? I read this today. Male student allegedly banned from cr a campus because his resemblance to a rapist was triggering. A male student, and this is from, uh, I, I pulled this off of Reason. I saw it a couple other places. I pulled this off of Reason.com. Uh, a male student at an unnamed college in Oregon was investigated for sexual assault. But even after he had his, he had cleared his name, he was still prohibited from having a contact with a female student, denying him access to his classes, residence, and job, because he merely resembled the man who committed the, committed rape. According to the anecdote at a um, commentary piece for the Harvard Law Written Review by Janet Haley, a professor of law at Harvard University, the piece provides an in-depth in look at the trouble with campus sexual assault edu uh, education efforts. Hitting on many subjects I've covered previously. Blah blah blah. Um, I recently here it is. I recently assisted a young man who was subjected by an administration at his small liberal arts university in Oregon to a month-long investigation into his campus relationships, seeking information about his possible sexual misconduct in them, an immense invasion of his and his friends' privacy, <laughs> and who was ordered to stay away from a fellow student, cutting him off from his housing, <laughs> his campus job, and educational opportunity. All because he reminded her of a man who raped her months before and a thousand miles away. He was found to be completely innocent of any sexual misconduct and was informed on the basis of the complaint against him only by accident and offhand. The stay away order remained in place and he was so broadly drawn up that he was in constant risk of violating it and becoming undisciplined for that. When the duty when the duty to prevent a sexual hostile environment was interrupted at this expanse is a firmly indifferent to the restrained person's complete and total innocent of any misconduct whatsoever. It is devastating to think that of a student being unable to walk around his campus without having to be risked of being traumatized by remember, reminders of a rape, but restricting a totally innocent student from walking around campus because he looks like the way uh, he looks like the person who raped her is unacceptable. That is so this exactly. Guy, so this, guy, this guy has now had his life fucked up because he happened to look like somebody. That is exactly and and for our audio listeners, the reason why I was giggling in the background is because while Dennis was reading all of that, Craig put a picture of Bill Cosby up <laughs> with a close up of his face. <laughs> but that is exactly what I'm fucking talking about. We are experiencing a moment so now he just puts up a baby? Just cause? Yeah. I don't know. It's a cute baby though. <laughs> I we are we are watching the development of the fall of the society that we know. Like we we are watching it crumble every day. And uh, a friend of mine from growing up, he posted on Facebook, he's in the military, and he posted this, this really uh, personal view uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> where he, he's talking about, you know, there's no, there are no more great leaders. The generals have failed us. Our, our society cannot stand. And it won't. As, as much as I don't want to admit that to myself, 
I don't want to admit to the idea that this this will not stand and we will not stand we will not be able to stop the eventual decline or invasion of a foreign nation with fighting on American soil I'm not so worried about an invasion I'm just looking at the collapse of what we have which is I it just say, I'm not going to say it's but happening the collapse <laughs> Huh? The collapse. The collapse is what leads to. Right. Well, I'm just saying the 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 collapse of the structure. I mean, if you go back, and I know we've talked about this a thousand times before, and this is like the old school, our old school show, and it was just you and me, and we used to go off on these tangents. But this is. I just had this discussion a couple days ago. The reason I think this is going to happen is because I was reading an article about the ancient Rome, the correlations between what happened in ancient Rome and what happens now. And again, the old saying, they always say history is doomed to repeat itself, you know, I mean, and I'm looking. Uh, economic collapse, uh, uh, heavy taxation, um, controlling factors by the elite and government. Um, I'm trying to remember with some of the other, I know for, uh, uh, they use, uh, slavery, was, slavery was involved in there, the, the use of more well, slavery, which is the, just pretty much the same process of uh, low wage workers, as far as I'm concerned. And the far right likes to, <laughs> and the the far right likes to make the correlation of the fact that Rome fell, Greece and Rome both fell shortly after, basically opening their moral standards wide open. Yeah, where had you know, you know, sexuality was 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 abundant, and you know. Men were fucking men in the streets, and and it was fucking crazy. It was it was just a an anal fuck fest. Yeah, well, that's because they because they didn't realize that's how it always was there. They didn't have, their sexual proclivities were always like that because one they weren't Christian for one thing. So, yeah. <laughs> whole, let, let, I mean. let me let let me tell you this. All right here here's an example of. There was a time in my life where I held to far right. Extreme right ideology. Extreme yeah. right ideology. I was I was a disillusioned young white male who <laughs> uh, who did not like. I already I was already misanthropic. I I already had the the mentality from the punk rock days of the the class war. And I, I fell into an extreme far-right ideology, which I, I walked away from and said, you know, that's fucking bullshit too. But I know people, Christians, who absolutely believe far-right ideology. Maybe not extreme far-right, but far-right. Uh, who have a homosexual son. Like, how can you hold to an ideology that basically says your son is subhuman? Yeah. Because it fits with your theology? Like, it, it, it don't... It, I, well, I almost committed major grammatical error there. It doesn't make any sense. It don't make any? Is that what you're going to say? It don't make any. It don't make none. It don't make, no make, none. <laughs> it, it don't make none at all. Which don't would mean that it does. Make, <laughs> don't make none, never mind. <laughs> but, uh... I, I can't hear that. I'm inundated here real quick by something. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Craig, you're you're being disruptive. <laughs> but uh it it doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense to me that people hold to these ideologies that make that uh, they're they're nonsense. Like 
there's no critical thought, there's no logic, there's no reason behind it. It's nonsense. Rome and Greece didn't fall because they were fucking each other in the ass. Rome and Greece fell because the fucking elite in those countries, in those nations, in those empires, allowed them to fall. They did things to purposely make them fall. And it had nothing to do with people's sexual orientations or sexual proclivities or yeah. preference. Like it had nothing it had nothing to do with that. And yet that's always one of the first things that people say. Well Rome fell because of the gays. Here we go. Oh, no. uh, <clears throat> they were all gay. So what they were gay from the fucking from day one. They liked it well they weren't gay. They were they fucking swung the bat both ways. They're yeah. left handed and right handed. So uh, from the History Channel, this is the eight reasons why Rome fell. First reason was invasion by barbarian tribes. Uh, the uh, uh, whether the Germanic uprising, you know, kept coming in and out uh, over and over again. In that economic troubles and over reliance on slave labor. In other words, uh, overly taxed. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Constant wars, overspending. Had here we go. Constant wars and overspending had significantly lightened imperial coffers, and oppressive taxation and inflation had widened the gap between rich and poor. In the hope of avoiding uh, the tax man, many members of the wealthy classes had even fled to the countryside and set up independent fiefdoms. Uh, at the same time, the empire was rocked by a labor deficit. Rome's economy depended on slaves, till its fields and work uh, its fields and work as craftsmen, and its military might had traditionally provided a fresh influx, but the conquered peoples put to work. But when the expansion ground to a halt, the thing, uh, they ran out of slaves. <laughs> the rise of the Eastern Empire, um, the Byzantine, or labor known as Constantinople, started dividing the empire into two halves. Overexpansion and military overspending, shocker. Government corruption and political instability, instability rather shocker. Uh, well, rival the Huns and the migration of the barbarian tribes. Uh, See, and this says here, uh, Christianity and the loss of traditional values, which I still have. Uh, let's see, with the decline of Rome, uh, with the, the decline of Rome dovetailed with the spread of Christianity, and some have argued that the rise of the new faith helped uh, contribute to the empire's fall. Ha! <laughs> yeah, like, like Christianity was the fucking answer to everything, apparently, and yet. If you if you think about it logically and reasonably, Christianity is probably what opened the floodgates to uh, yeah he, he most, most of lot. the world problems. Yeah, it says here the uh, these ended the uh, let's see the Edict of Milan in 1313 became a state religion in 1380 uh, may have uh, eroded traditional Roman values. Um, Christianity displaced the polytheistic Roman religion, which viewed the emperor as having divine status, uh, and also shifted focus away from the glory of the state and into a soul, uh, soul deity. And then uh, popes and church uh, elders took an increased role in political affairs, further complicating governance. So there. <laughs> so yeah. And then the um, weakening of the Roman legions. Military was the envy of the ancient world, and the, during the decline, uh, relig re, uh, re legions began to change. Unable to recruit enough soldiers, uh, had problems like uh, Constantine began to hire foreign mercenaries to prop up their armies. Uh, legions eventually swelled with German Goths and other barbarians so much that uh, all these soldiers a bit old, no loyalty to the empire, and their power hungry officers often turned against the Roman emperors. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. You know, just some simple. I mean, there. I mean, there are cor different correlations between what's going on now, and what went back then. One of the largest empires in the world at the time. Yeah, and I mean, something that people have to. Every, I think every political pundit either has said it or missed it completely. Nations rise and fall all the time. It it happens. You reach an uh, you reach an apex of your of your uh, of what you can do economically, military military, uh, you know your 
your impact globally reaches a point where you peak and then you fall. And if you're lucky, your nation like Britain has uh, has had several rises and falls, but they've been lucky enough to survive each one and come back. Right. If you're not so lucky, it, uh, things change drastically. And maybe you don't come back as, uh, like, if America were to fall. You know, United States of America is known globally. If the United States of America were to crumble and fall apart, we might not be known as the United States of America anymore. We might be fucking five or six different uh, nation states. I've read, I've read somewhere that uh, like the idea would be like I think it'd be economically more feasible to be like eight different sovereign nations for the United States. I think it was somewhere like six to eight. I think is what they said. It would be. And, I mean, if you think about it reasonably and logically, it would be. It'd be easier. It wouldn't maybe not necessarily more feasible, but. It'd be easier. Yeah, I mean, because what we have, some along the lines of almost four hundred million people in this country, right up there. It's, it's over three. I know it's over three hundred million. It's I think it's closer to four now. So that's more than my. I mean, not including like China and India or something like that. I mean, that's a we don't have you know or Southeast Asia. Most of the most of the world lives in somewhere in the Southeast Asian countries. <laughs> <laughs> but compared to like the European Union and most of Europe in general, where a lot of us come from, it, it's it's not feasible. I mean, look how they're look how well it's working over there for them to try to be a European Union. No one's getting along. <laughs> Everyone's money is falling apart because one country goes south. That means everyone else is trying to hold them up. It's like here, you start losing money in one place. We got to try to hold it up. We're having the infra I mean, our, look at our infrastructure. Just let's go with infrastructure. Our roads are shit. Our high, our, our uh, bridges are shit. Uh, our energy, our systems of uh, running electrics are starting to go bad, and we don't have enough people to cover it all. So, what happens when that starts to go down? Guys, like there's not, there's not many people like you or Craig or myself left, really. I mean, in all honesty, you need, you would need thousands of people to keep that up. You know. And Yeah, I mean, I, there's, I, there's no argument from here. <laughs> I'm surprised you. Uh, I remember seeing this on television live. I'm pretty sure I saw it too. <laughs> well, I mean, this happened in Chicago, wasn't it? This was just outside of Chicago when this happened. Like 11. Yeah. Was this uh, like a pirate interruption of a Doctor Who episode? Yeah, off of Channel 11. It, 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 no, he was never. He never found. They was never found. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I just made a giant bastard piece for all the greatest world newspaper nerds. <laughs> I'm surprised someone had a copy of this somewhere. I'd like to know how he got that background going. Like, is that just like a piece of corrugated steel that someone's just moving back and forth? <laughs> That's disturbing on many levels. As far as I can tell, a massive electric shock, he died instantly. The generator? But well, you're always so careful. Right back to Doctor Who. Yep. Fairly the same night they did, uh, they had gotten uh, WGN as well during the live news feed. Oh, did they? Yeah. Huh. Because I knew about this. I remember. I actually remember seeing that happen. I'm trying to figure out what the hell was going on. <laughs> At the time, I was like seven or eight. Yeah. And I just part of the show. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest thing to see. 
Oh, and then there's yeah, there, I know I knew about that one. There's a couple of them that happened out there, but that's like one of the few. I think it was like the only time it was ever really happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of the most of the like the the pirate break-ins, uh, disturbances on on uh, on on air have been over the radio. Yeah, yeah. But I know I know we uh, huh? we kind of went down a, a a little bit darker hole that we haven't been down in uh, many many moons on this episode. I don't know exactly what led. Well, yeah, I do. I led <laughs> us down that that rabbit hole. Well, you were angry. Sometimes we angry. Sometimes you need to have to place the place to vent your anger. Yeah, and I I this is the. Or and this has been I wish anger just aggravated, really. And this has been like, uh, for me, this has been a a life changing experience. This doing this podcast because I've opened myself to listen, like actually listen to other viewpoints. Yes, you you have exposed yourself many times on this. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And uh fuck you Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh but I've I've learned more and more from talking to the various people that we've talked to and through doing the podcast I've connected to people for the podcast who have kind of changed some of the ways that I look at certain things. And whereas that's both a good thing, and there's still there's still that part of me that fucking rails against it because it a lot of times feels like I'm being beat about the face with it. This this podcast was always supposed to be the free market of ideas. Like that's that's one of the main concepts that Den that you and I Dennis had had come up with in the beginning. We're back to the fucking soundboard. Uh, but it's been it's been uh, it's been truly a pleasure to be able to you know go down rabbit holes and and go down roads that I wouldn't have taken the time to even consider over the past three years. Uh, well, two years we're entering the the third year soon but it, it has been truly a, a pleasure to to grow on this podcast and this podcast has given me many many more soapboxes than I deserve to have because <laughs> you know who the fuck wants to listen to me I'm a miserable fuck I so 30-40 people give or take <laughs> <laughs> If, if now, our podcast, now they might see us, that would probably drop down to about two or three. I mean, <laughs> if uh, if Craig keeps naming our podcast after relatively famous bands, I guess. Uh, I think this one will be called U two. U two. U B forty. U B forty. Ooh. Let's go back to the eighties. Let's pull out a good eighties. No. Taxi's Dennis. Runner? No, Dennis. U B forty. I am for it. How about, how about next? Let's, let's, let's give, let's give, we got to give a shout-out to the 80s. And excess. And excess. There we go. <laughs> I like that. And excess works for me. I don't... See, I don't understand why they're called in excess when you're only pronouncing the X and S. Why isn't it I in excess? Inix. <laughs> Inix. <laughs> Or in, or maybe, or maybe just maybe it's it's not an I, it's an E. <laughs> then it's Enix. <laughs> maybe we'll just call this episode Minuto. Even better, even better. Ricky Martin. It's got to make some sense, though. What Ricky Martin doesn't make any sense. Not for the title of this show. But there's old play totally did. We talked about video games and board games.
What does it have and to do? And the fact that it's cold as fuck outside, so it's cold play. <laughs> it makes sense. Kind of. If you want to, you know. <laughs> kind of, maybe. <laughs> hey, if fucking, you know, people can draw a correlation between things that have nothing to do with each other and, and say that that's it, then fucking, fucking A. That makes absolute sense. Right on. Word. <laughs> Thunderbird. We had a time. We're fucking. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> Craig's like, we can go way much longer. Travis, like, I'm running out of steam. <laughs> I have run out of steam. I'm, I'm, well, I'm like, uh, pleasantly. Like, our show, our show was uh, like we. I mean, normally we come in a little blind when we do any normal show, but we were totally set up for something completely different today. So I had like nothing on the game. You know game what? You guys need to just. Buck up. All right, Mr. Buck Black. Up what? Buck up, <laughs> yeah. Bucko. Mr. Fucking, I don't have anything going on on my computer. I was totally, <laughs> totally doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, we can't see you is what I'm saying, ass. <laughs> I'm busy working this, working this whole thing out. <laughs> yeah, by shutting off your screen completely. <laughs> uh what are you busy downloading more fucking samples? Yeah, Do you not soundboard? Not. I didn't shut my screen off. What is well, it's off to us. Yeah, I don't see you. I can see me just fine. I can't see you at all, dude. I got nothing. I got a black screen. Technology is now taking over yet again on this show. Huzzah. It started sucking a butt, and it's going <laughs> to end with sucking a butt. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what that that's, huh? that's what you should. That's what you should fucking episode sucking a butt. Really, let's not go there, right? That seems weird. <laughs> that's what I named the episode after we went to fucking uh, Tardis, Chicago Tardis. Oh, I named yeah. it Chicago Tardis could suck a butt. <laughs> yeah, well they yeah well we had a problem with them. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was off. I didn't know I was completely off like that. Yeah, right. I've got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing, dude. Mother, fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, technology. Gotta love it. That's Where why you that? should have saved <laughs> the hour beforehand. We'll see now. Your screen share is working. Yeah. I'm just gonna have to screen share share the whole thing. Try turning your screen share off. See if that fucking turns it back on. Did that do anything? There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. It must have just been between the two that I just did. The uh, see, you should have saved the fucking that hour of technical difficulties that we recorded, and we could have just added it, added it in. No, I shouldn't have. Because <laughs> then you would have the fucking excellent hold music. <laughs> oh, I get some excellent hold music if you want that. <laughs> No. I could, though. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I am I am just pleased as punch at the intro, the video intro for the fucking the YouTube channel. I like that. It's oh, that's hilarious. hilarious. And then, and then did, you, did you enjoy the actual video that I put together for the show last week? Uh, that was just clips, though. It was... Just well, yeah, but I made it look good. Well, yeah, but it's like two clips. I'm praising myself here, man. I took video from their from their Kickstarter <laughs> and put it over your interview, so it, it, it without sound, and it looked amazing. You guys were talking I'm, about the, and it was all over the place. I'm sorry, Craig. I am fresh out of fucking gold stars. I will go to the store you know and I will buy some tonight. Buck the fuck up and get on with it. <laughs> That's what it said. Well, since we're talking about other things, uh, so I, I just I found this thing for popular science uh, we were talking about before is the America's power sector is aging and demands for energy keeps going. Uh, Travis, you might want to think about getting into this. 
Uh, they need uh, the number of skilled workers that will be needed to replace the electric power industry is 100,000 this year by 2015. Uh, let's see, 52% of all engineers and technicians will be needed to be replaced is 52% in the next 10 years. Uh, let's see, 38% of all the workers will be eligible to, uh, to retire in five. Uh, 50 per six, 56 percent of the uh, national grids engineers are at least 45 years old, and 44 percent of the national grids engineers have less than 10 years experience. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going to school for electrical engineering. Hold on, no. I am I am far too fucking dumb for that. <laughs> oh, with that attitude, you're not going. <laughs> No, I'm just I'm I'm realistic. I'm I'm I've seen electrical engineering work and I'm now he fucking plays it. <laughs> well, everybody, thank oh, you. Yeah. Huh? What? Well, Things here's start. the problem. Uh oh. I was trying to do this. Get my name, Sam, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs>